Hi there, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is when you're watching this. Uh, welcome to Octoprint on Air number 49, I think. Yes, that was what was on the on the preview thingy. Um, I'm your host, Gina Heuske. That is how you pronounce my last name. No weird V in there. It's an S, trust me. And uh, yeah, welcome. So a month since the last one of these, again, uh, and uh, yeah, as always, I'm going to tell you what I have been up to in the past few uh, in the past few months, right? In the past month, um, what the next steps are going to be. Then we'll have a quick look at the stats, and then we will have a Q and A segment. And this time, we actually have two questions that were in the backlog, but I also keep an eye on the live chat uh, for those of you who are watching this live, um, and uh, try to answer anything that pops up in there. So let's jump right into it, I guess. I just have to quickly make sure that I actually see my notes here. Yeah. Um, so first of all, what I have been up to. So um, you might have noticed that since the last installment of these, there were two Octoprint um, patch releases um, uh, again. So 1.8.5 released on October 17th and 1.8.6 <laughs> released on October 18th. And uh, yeah, so these two releases were pure, pure bug fix releases that patched a bunch of stuff that was still amiss after this, um, after all these security fixes that I did with 183. And I hope, I sincerely hope that those were the final issues that needed to be fixed in a in a in a bug fix release uh, in 18, um, because I would really like to concentrate more on 1.9 going forward instead of constantly working on 1.8 stuff. And yeah, but, but but things are looking good so far. We haven't seen any big regressions or anything like that that were reported anymore. So uh, hopefully that was that. Then speaking about 1.9, I finally got back to working on that as well. Uh, I've merged some pending PRs. And I've also reviewed some more. And um, from both of these, basically, something that is going to be very interesting, which is currently in the pipeline, even though it is a lot of work to uh, review and to merge, is uh, some work being done by Christian Wörtner, who is working on turning webcam support into a plugin, or rather into plugins. Uh, so creating a plugin interface for webcam support which means extracting the webcam uh, functionality that is in Octoprint, like here is a stream URL, embed that somewhere in the web interface, here's a snapshot URL, use that for time lapses and all that, extracting that into a plugin so that it can be, um, that the implementation, the concrete webcam implementation can be swapped out. For example, if you rather want uh, something like a uh, WebRTC stream, you could do that that way, or uh, if you have some different sources for snapshots that could also be done that way. And we're still figuring out some things here and going a bit back and forth. And it's a very nice experience, uh, yeah, collaborating on something like that. Um, and it is not yet merged, but I hope we will still be able to get it ready in time for 1.9. Um, then another thing that I finally found the time to review and merge is uh, Jim's multi-install PR. So with 1.9, it will be possible um, in the plugin manager to install not uh, to install more than one plugin at the same time. Basically, multiple select and then fire away, and uh, also to enqueue plugin installs while the printer is going. So so far, you you're not able to do any kind of plugin management while the print is ongoing. The reason for that being that yeah, specifically installing plugins, um, but also possibly other uh, plugin management tasks, um, takes a certain amount of system resources that then are not available for driving a printer. And depending on the underlying system that you have and what else it is doing in the background as well, that could have consequences, severe consequences for the print quality that you can achieve. And this is why so far plugin management has been disabled for, uh, for, for uh, during ongoing prints. The thing though is that, um, so nothing changes about this. You still cannot install a plugin while you're printing, but you will be able to mark a plugin to be installed after your print finishes. So what will happen is 
Um, after the print finishes, you get a little countdown and if you do nothing, then stuff will start installing. And I cannot remember right now if the restart after this gets triggered automatically as well or not, but something like this, uh, yeah, uh, will also happen. And if you cancel the print or if the print job fails, then it will not automatically do that, but rather tell you um, uh, that, that something went wrong and expect some action from you. Uh, the reason for that being, if I remember correctly, <laughs> right now, by the way, how I describe the features here, uh, the, pe uh, the reason for that being that um, if uh, something went wrong with your print, you might want to investigate before basically yeah, nuking the whole state of Octoprint, nuking the terminal, te uh, te terminal, terminal tab and everything else. Um, and instead want to want to access the information that might be locked in there or maybe see whatever notifications are on the screen right now. So that is really not the point where you just want to blindly reboot or blindly install stuff on the user system and reboot the system or rather restart the server. Um, but this is rather something something where you want to give the user a chance to intervene and, and, and do some detective work first. And so this is why there is this distinction. Then we have uh, another new plugin extension point by Ryan Finney, um, who provided uh, a way for extending the chart markings. So in, in 1.8.3, uh, 1.8.0, Octoprint introduced uh, markings on the temperature graph, like uh, print started, print stopped, uh, print cancelled or something, paused, resumed, uh, print ended. And uh, so far these were hard coded, so we only had those that showed up in there, so stopped. Uh, started, uh, done, cancelled, paused, resumed, and I think that is all of them. And now plugins will be able to extend uh, the, the, the chart markings, or rather insert custom chart markings. So, for example, if you have a plugin that does something prior to your print starting or, or monitoring some temperature or something, you could now inject the chart marker into the, into the chart. Into the chart. Um, and I'm really curious about what the community will do with that. Um, and uh, yeah. And another thing that I also finally found the time to <laughs> review and merge for good is um, uh, yet another big performance boost for the G-Code viewer, um, Jove, 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 I never know how to pronounce this nickname, but um, uh, sat down and uh, revamped the whole way that the G-Code viewer loads and parses the G-Code and also stores it internally. So stuff will now be zipped and um, processed asyn asynchronously and stuff. So everything will load faster and consume, uh, not necessarily faster, but it will definitely consume less memory while doing that. So um, the hope is that with that and all the other performance improvements that already went into the G-Code viewer the past couple of releases, um, that thing will now really be as performant as it possibly can, given the architecture of it. Um, yeah, and what I also um, merged and also did myself in parts uh, were some more compatibility fixes to make 1.9, so Octoprint 1.9 compatible to Python 3.11. Uh, Python 3.11 was released, I think, last week or something like that. Either it was last week or it was the week before. Everything is a bit in a blur right now, to be honest. Um, and um, the problem is that Octoprint 1.8 is not compatible with Python 3.11. So first of all, there was a was a third party dependency that Octoprint was using that was not yet compatible, but 1.9 was already ported to that to use that uh, thanks to the work, work of Charlie Powell um, uh, to, to pull in a new version. Uh, but we also had some issues with the, the Pydantic version that Octoprint was using on the maintenance branch already and some other stuff. So that is all now fixed and should already uh, should work. So the maintenance branch should start up fine now on uh, Python 3.11 and is actually also being automatically tested on it now. But in order to prevent issues like we are currently seeing uh, on the community forums where people are um, coming uh, in with support questions because they try to install Octoprint under Python 3.11 and were a bit stumped when it wouldn't work. Uh, I've also made it so that starting with Octoprint 1.9, it will ref it will also have a, a, a bit more of a of a strict upper bound. So so far, Octoprint all uh, Octoprint's setup 
only checked whether it was installing under anything bigger than Python 2.7, uh, bigger than Python 3.0, so basically a Python 3 and not a Python 4. Um, what it will now do is, uh, or rather, I think it was checking whether it was a Python 3.7 plus and less than a 4. Um, and now it will check whether it is more than a 3.7, but less than a 3.12. Um, because we cannot control what happens, uh, what happens uh, especially to third-party dependencies that Octoprint relies on, and just writing this 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 tested Python version range into the README apparently doesn't seem to be enough to keep people from running uh, against walls in that scenario. So um, in the future, what will happen simply if you try to install Octoprint under Python 3.12 RC, for example, or I think this is still alpha or beta state, but anyhow, um, it will simply lock a message that the Python version doesn't match. So it will do the same thing as if you try to install it under Python 2. And that means it's a bit more work for us in the development um, uh, and contributor group to, um, yeah, to, to check for compatibility because we'll have to change that first locally, try and install and stuff. But uh, for anyone checking out the sources or downloading the stuff from PyPI in the future, that will work way better. And uh, that is worth the slightly additional overhead of having to adjust a version number when testing compatibility. And I'm just seeing that GitHub Actions has a partial outage right now. Wonderful. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was that. Um, so some work that finally I was able to also put into 1.9 again, and I also just fixed two bugs that also were still in the backlog. So uh, I hope that come next week and uh, and such, I will be able to, to make a huge dent in the existing 1.9 tickets. Um, okay, so what else did I do? I did some bug fixing and refactoring of plugins.octoprint.org. So the thing is that um, the plugin repository is a static page ho hosted on GitHub pages. It's basically a quiet, huge Jekyll template with a, with a bunch of, uh, of, of magic happening in templating code. But there are also some Python scripts that take care of um, pulling in some additional metadata in preparation of the page build. So for example, we go over all of the plugins that are re registered inside the repository and pull in GitHub statistics for them, uh, if, if they are hosted on GitHub, obviously only, and also pull in the current uh, usage uh, information from the anonymous usage tracking. And recently there was some issues where um, there were two issues actually. One issue was that for some reason something changed on the GitHub API that we were we were using. It was suddenly sorting the other way, with the result that um, displaying or, or our attempt or my attempt to display the latest release ended up in displaying the first release ever made of the plugin, which certainly is not something that interests many people, um, and led to some confusion. So that was fixed by um, by adjusting the query that I need to do there. And um, another thing that we also saw and that I'm still not sure what it actually was, was something that might have been rate limiting issues. So um, in order to figure out some stuff like Python 3 compatibility and things like that for plugins that have not yet uh, reported that back into the repository, we actually reach out to GitHub um, over the REST API and fetch files. Plus we also do these queries for all of the plugins that are on GitHub, which are most of them to figure out last release and such. So there is quite a lot of um, calls going against the GitHub API. And the thing is that we do this with um, with a with an access token. So we don't have, um, we, we have a rate limit of something like 5,000 requests per hour. So we have no issue there. But we observed some issues in past builds where the p final third or so of the plugin suddenly couldn't reach GitHub anymore. And I've seen it in the past that um, GitHub does some IP specific rate limiting. So when you try to do very a large number of requests um, in a very uh, fast um, uh, round trip time um, from one specific host, then they block that. 
probably in order to prevent spamming attacks and to prevent um, yeah rampant abuse uh, rampant abuse of their of their request APIs. Um, in that case, they blocked their own runner probably for a short period of time, and at least that's the current hypothesis of what happened because. It was very rarely rare that it happened, but when it happened, we didn't yet have enough debug output in place to really figure out what it was. But long story short, I refactored the um, the enrichment Python script so that takes care of running all of these requests and such to batch query some stuff. So uh, before that, we were reaching out for every single plugin that was doing a GitHub. Uh, that uh, that was hosted on GitHub uh, once on the GraphQL API to fetch la latest releases, last released version, um, last commit, number of stars, and uh, number of open and closed issues and such. And what I'm now doing is I'm doing a GraphQL uh, query for 10. So I'm, I'm first batching up 10 of them, do a, a query for all of them, and then fetch the responses and uh, spread them again to the workers that are processing all of that and I do this repeatedly. So we've now gone, gone from something like 300 qu uh, GraphQL query per um, per run to 30, which probably will solve a lot of problems in the long run, especially as the plugin repository keeps growing. So that was one thing. Another thing that I needed to do, um, which was really, really overdue, was some uh, long needed server maintenance. So um, there is a bit of infrastructure in place now uh, surrounding Octoprint, and I'm not only talking about the community forums, which uh, thankfully I do not have to maintain, but which are in the hands of a very, very capable admin, hi Jubaleth, um, and also hi Can't Live Long. Um, but um, octoprint.org, plugins.octoprint.org, tracking.octoprint.org, so anything that is not community.octoprint.org is something that needs some uh, tender love and care here and there, and that is what it got. And uh, this time this meant some overhead, some unexpected overhead, because, because the tracking server had some issues afterwards. So I pulled in the new Grafana version, that Grafana version didn't want to cope with, com communicate with the Elastic, elastic Search uh, uh, server anymore, so I needed to update that, but that in turn had some backwards uh, compatibility issues, so everything imploded here and there, and um, I was able to fix it, and it didn't cost that much time, thankfully, but it, if you recently looked on, and I'm going to switch you over here, um, yeah, I, I got a disconnection message by OBS, so it lost connection to the YouTube servers apparently, but now it seems to be fine, okay. Um, where was I? Right, I was just in the process of switching you over to my screen because what I wanted to show you is a fun little thing. So if you were wondering about this spike where suddenly people were printing twice as much over an hour or so or a couple of days ago, yeah, this was uh, um, a side effect of the migration of uh, the Elasticsearch server because um, I had to... Um, intake some of the log data again from the tracking server and there was an overlap of one hour because I did a mistake in cleaning up the data that I had to reintake again and now all the data here is doubled. All the events here are doubled. But thankfully this only shows in the print duration but still if you see something like this in one of the stats, uh, stat graphs on, on data.octoprint.org it's probably just my fault um, and in the future you will know how things like this happen. Okay, so that was that. And every time that I touch the tracking server, like I had to do for this stuff, I uh, am once again reminded that I really need to switch away from Elasticsearch because that thing is an absolute resource hog and the tracking server is actually the most expensive thing in the whole uh, Octoprint infrastructure right now. So yeah, this is also something that is burning a hole in my, uh, my to-do list, but Okay, speaking of data.octoprint.org, that also saw some work because both that and Bundle Viewer um, still were pulling in Google Fonts. And I do not know how familiar you are with uh, Germany and our problem with cease and desist lawyers here, but there's currently a, a wave of cease and desist um, notices going out for lawyers that are specialized on 
pushing out these cease and desist notices and then demanding money from you for for doing something bad. In this case, using Google Fo uh, Google Fonts because Google Fonts is considered not privacy friendly enough to be run on German websites that are even remotely considered rem commercial. So, in order to prevent that <clears throat> that stuff from happening to me, I um, cleaned up a bit. And in the process of touching the bundle viewer, I also uh, merged some pull requests that were submit submitted there and cleaned it up a bit. And the result is that the bundle viewer now also has some filters that you can use to further filter out the log views in case you need that for whatever reason. Um, and while I was throwing out Google Fonts, I also threw out Google Analytics. So Octoprint now has a fancy new uh, plausible installation running on plausible.octoprint.org, but currently not open to the public. I'm still wondering if I want to make the stats from that public or not. I think it's probably not really interesting to the general public, but mostly just me. And um, yeah, so all of the stuff like plugins, community, uh, the, the, the default web page, tracking and no, tracking didn't even have anything. But yeah, all of this stuff now uses plausible instead of Google Analytics. So bye bye, Google. Um, and then the final thing that I wanted to mention here is uh, I. You remember my rants in the past two or three installments of these um, where I um, complained about an influx of uh, vulnerability reports that were a bit, let's let's call them a bit subpar in quality and also about stuff that really wasn't vulnerabilities because it was like, yeah, okay, if you install a plugin that does horrible things, yes, of course, but this is not a vulnerability and that is an inherent risk of having a plugin system, basically. That's like saying that an SSH and, and, and yeah, an SSH shell is uh, is a remote code execution vulnerability. Vulnerability. Ah, vulnerability. It's a hard word to say for a German at uh, past five p.m. Um, and so what I did is I finally sat down and uh, fleshed out Octoprint security policy. So on the octoprint.org slash security, there is now the security policy and that tells everyone who is interested in or, or needs to report a vulnerability to the Octoprint project how to do that. First of all, email to security at octoprint.org. Um, also, uh, to do this uh, responsibly, give us 90 days to release a fixed version before uh, making that public and also how, how the whole communication is going to run pretty much. Um, also where to find the latest release and most importantly what uh, what vulnerabilities are not qualifying. So what is stuff that we are not interested in getting and will not accept reports of, which is uh, stuff like theoretical attacks without proof of exploitability, require, uh, something that requires the user to install a malicious plugin or a malicious language pack, Things that mean the user has had to expose Octoprint on the public internet because, once again, this is not something that is recommended or even officially supported. And um, also something that we also saw a lot in the uh, in the stuff that led into one eighth in, in, uh, up to the fixes in one point eight three was attacks that the user can only perform on themselves. So we had some stuff that was basically log in as an admin and then do this where. Where, where it's like, yeah, okay, that gives you admin right when you already have admin rights. That, okay. Um, yeah, and then also some notes on severity scoring, public disclosure, CVE assignment, and also that we do not pay out bounties. And I hope that will uh, help a bit in managing this in the future. And I also have some more ideas on how to uh, make this a bit more approachable than security at octoprint.org as an email. But uh, that is something I'm not yet allowed to talk about. Um, we'll see. Um, okay. Then, what are the next steps? Uh, yeah, so I already hinted at it. Uh, at it, 1.9 is something that I really want to get out of the way now for good because uh, 1.8 has been out now since May. Uh, that's been it's been six months, and usually by this time we would have uh, the next release on the way, well under the way. 
This time it didn't work out because oh, so much happened this year. Um, and so much stuff was screaming for my attention this year, but I want, want to at least take care of the current backlog items. And yeah, ideally I want to get at least a release candidate out still this year. Uh, I don't really think that we will still be able to do a, a full 1.9 release. And frankly, um, I don't like new releases right before Christmas very much. So, and that would be the case by now because, uh, yeah, you can calculate with pretty much one month at least of a release candidate phase. And that would put us at the beginning of, uh, uh, or rather that would mean that in order to get the release on out before, yeah, let's call it the holiday, uh, the holiday, uh, uh, um, ah, I lost the word again. This is happening a bit in, uh, lately and I have to say it, it worries me a tad, but uh, I've read that it is a sign of stress. So there we go. Um, and um, yeah, basically I, I do not want to release anything after uh, December 15th. So that would mean frozen zone. That was the word that I was looking for. Um, and actually, I, I actually don't even want to release anything after December 10th. So that would mean we have 10 days, 10 more days, actually seven more days um, to, uh, yeah, to, to um, work through all the stuff that is still tagged as 1.9 on the repository, uh, on the issue tracker, and also finalize the, the big, huge webcam plugin merge and some stuff should not be rushed. So um, focus will be one uh, will be to try to get an RC1 out. And if this doesn't work out any uh, any way, then that is the way it is. It doesn't make sense to rush stuff and cause issues in the process. Um, and Jim's, Jim's just said uh, 10 year anniversary, uh, anniversary RC1 release. Uh, yeah, uh, in case you didn't know. Uh, this holiday season will be Octoprint's 10 year an anniversary, but I will not be releasing a first release candidate for 1.9 on Octoprint's 10th birthday, because that would mean I would have to work exactly on Christmas. And that is not something that I want to do for obvious reasons. Um, so uh, yeah, the first ever public hi there and the first ever commit uh, that went towards what was or what what is what was going to be Octoprint happened on December twenty fifth, two thousand twelve. So, um, yeah. Oh, that also brings me to the point that I still have to do something for the ten year anniversary, and I'm, yeah, I'm definitely going to throw a blog post about that, obviously. But I also hope that I will still find the time somehow to design something that people can print if they want to. I have some ideas, but uh, so far I have not yet found the time. Um, yeah. And, uh, the other thing that I really want to do, and that is something that I thankfully also started getting back to a bit this week, this, finally this week, uh, was, uh, continue to work on the docu uh, documentation rewrite. Um, and, um, all of the other stuff up there <laughs> that I, that I already talked about prevented me from doing that again within the last four months, uh, four weeks, ugh, four weeks. Um, so that will be another focus for the rest of 2022 and probably also the start of 2023. And earlier I saw in a live chat that Jim was no, uh, was noting I should concentrate more on 2.0. First, I need to make all of this. Um, yeah, uh, I lost another word. <laughs> if you know, if you if you see me thinking and and trying to figure out what to say. Um, a bit more often these days, then I'm really sorry for that. And as I said, that is also something that is really worrying me as well. Feasible? Is this the right word? Um, yeah, I first need to make sure that I can actually, I actually don't uh, constantly circle the burnout bef uh, with this, with this project before I can drop the whole working towards making sustainable, that was the word, towards making things sustainable a bit. So this is the primary focus right now. And that is what I also said in whew, sometime around May or June, I think, in, in, in Octoprint on air number 43, 45, I don't know. Um, that I, I really wish I could concentrate on two, but I cannot concentrate on two because I constantly have to do everything else. And 
I cannot not do everything else because if I do not do everything else, then nothing happens. Um, and or maybe it will happen, but it will. I I will not feel like doing a good job, and so I first need to work on that. So yeah, welcome to uh, Octoprint's tenth anniversary, where Gina finally needs to find a way to spread the whole stuff over the shoulders of more people because it simply doesn't scale anymore the way it is now. Okay, um, with that being said, a quick look at the stats. And yeah, I mean, we already saw this earlier with this funny little spike here. Um, still looks fairly normal and, and fairly unusual. And just as a side note, data.octoprint.org is something that everyone at every time can just take a look at. So these are the stats that are being exported from the tracking server. Um, and um, several times per day, actually, and uh, this stuff, these these graphics, then are are visualizing uh, all of the data that uh, up until a year ago or so you could uh, only look at if you were me, <laughs> but now um, at least yeah through the exports and through this 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 React application here, stuff is now accessible for everyone. But since you can look at this all time, let's rather take a look at. The stuff that you cannot look at all time and once again down whoopsala that was not what i wanted to scroll here down here you once again have uh the double data intake due to backlog fail ignore <laughs> so this is how it looks like here um we are still at 12 percent python 2 usage and frankly ah stop using that already um 186 has now a really nice adoption of 36% of all installs out there. There are still some people who refuse to upgrade past 1.5 for some reason, but okay. We also even still have some almost a thousand of people running 1.4.0, but okay. And uh, yeah, so this is the spread, the current one um, of the past seven days, I should add. And uh, over the past seven days, we have seen something like uh, 95,000 separate instances. Over the past 30 days, it was 1, 000, uh, 128,000. As a reminder, the, um, the actual number is probably 10 times as high based on, uh, on, on uh, website accesses and stuff, and especially based on PyPI stats, uh, or rather Py, uh, PyWheels stats. And... Um, printed versions per hour and stuff. So nothing uh, printed hours per version, nothing out of the ordinary here. And as always uh, a fun uh, spread through all, uh, throughout the whole globe and still no blip in Antarctica. I'm really, really hoping at some point I will see a blip down here somewhere. But yeah, if any one of you is a researcher um, going through on, uh, to Antarctica soon. Um, now is your chance. Also, something in, in Greenland would also be fun. But but actually, I'm more focused on Antarctica because this is the final continent that I'm missing here in the collection. Yeah. So, um, that was that. Also, I just saw that Albert Nie uh, Albert Nielsen has joined the chat. Hi. That reminded me. Next steps. So, um. I should actually flip switch back to me. Yeah. Uh, next steps. So um, some of you might have heard of this thing in in Frankfurt. This 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 trade fair for manufacturing for additive manufacturing called Form Next. And um, I know that some people are 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 going uh, from the community. And I just wanted to say that I will not be attending that fair because of reasons how it yeah basically because of its security and health concept, which is non-existent. And with COVID still out and about and running rampant through the whole uh, community here and stuff, that is not something that I am going to risk. Uh, but if anyone wants to meet up, I'm like a 20 minute rain, a train ride from, uh, from Frankfurt. And I'm happy to just meet up outside for grabbing a bite to eat talking stuff like that no problem but i 
will try my very best to not set foot into the trade fair simply because, yeah, I do not want to support events that pretend that the pandemic is over and pretend that we do not have vulnerable parts in our in our um, communities why uh, people who who cannot afford to get sick who cannot risk to get sick and uh, yeah don't even do the least in order to allow them to partake in society so um with that being said, I also am one of the first signatories of the Public Health Pledge, which is um, um, yeah, a pledge that basically says that I will not attend any events that do not have uh, a proper uh, health concept and uh, do not take any steps to protect their attendees and their speakers and such. So there you have it. Uh, annoying thing that I still have to talk about stuff like this three years into the whole mess but it is what it is and um, considering I mean there is only a low risk probably of getting long COVID but we still know way too little about it and it is not something that I'm going to risk when I'm already this close to not being able to handle everything that I need to handle as is with full energy and full uh, health. So um, there you have it. Okay, that is what I wanted to say before I start with the Q&A segment, which I'm going to jump to now. So um, back to the screen, because we have some slides prepared as always um, with the questions. So the first question uh, was from Sebastian. Um, there is now for quite some time, in fact, an official 64 bits version of Raspberry Pi OS. Do you see any value of using a 64 bits OS for running Octoprint or is it simply overkill? And honestly, personally, I have not found any value in that yet. Um, I'm uh, happy if someone can educate me as in how that could bring any value to Octoprint. Um, Maybe it does for some additional stuff that you want to run next to Octoprint on your Pi, but for Octoprint as the server itself, and also, frankly, for the webcam server, I don't see a benefit right now of uh, jumping to 64 bits. And from my experience so far that I've seen, also from, from um, the issues that I've seen with the Octopi image that uh, Guy is uh, building against the 64 bits uh, version of Raspberry Pi OS, it didn't seem as stable, frankly, which is obviously not due to the fact that it is 64-bit, but rather because um, the, the image is based on something else. So, um, or at least it was the last time I checked that. So I don't really see right now why I should be switching uh, or, ra or rather why the Octopi image should necessarily run on 64-bits. But I know that guy is working on that stuff, so uh, long time a long term there will probably be a, um, also a 64-bit octopi image um, question is how stable it will be personally i will focus and and also keep the download links and stuff and stuff pointing to 32 bits and just go with the um yeah with the with the with the thing that that so far has uh, been quite stable quite quite working and uh has not forced us to jump through that many hoops in the past couple of years as in the start. So, yeah. And another question by John. Lately, I've been using Octoprint less because most of my printers are on Clipper, but I do miss it a lot, just that the integration between Clipper and Octoprint is limited by the serial interface. I remember you wanted to decouple the entire connectivity into a module. Is that still on the table? What's the best to help you get there? Yeah, so that is definitely still on the table, and that is actually one of the big things that I am uh, that I plan for 2.0, which brings us back to my earlier note about the whole 2.0 and and my resources situation. Um, the sad thing really is that I have not had a chance to touch anything about the new com layer uh, since December seventeenth, two thousand and twenty-one, so almost a year now, at least nothing in this whole year so far and i cannot even tell you why but 2022 has been absolutely insane with throwing curveballs at me all the time with 
the the overhead stuff on this project with the with the things piled on top of the regular maintenance and stuff re reaching reaching heights that I've never before seen and that have driven me constantly uh, driven me to constantly circle uh, circling the tray the drain the whole year now and sometimes I even got my foot stuck down it um I had to take an emergency break in spring because of that and since then I've been doing my best to not have it happen again uh, so that I do not have to take another emergency break but um, I'm barely holding on uh, and so as I already said my focus for now is on getting this project better documented and spread across more shoulders and then when that is done I look into finalizing this bloody com, com layer and um, and and get it merged into the devil branch um but before that can happen so um yeah some stuff needs to needs to be done first and that is something where i could actually use some help um some things are easier to do and some things require a bit more commitment of anyone wanting to help so uh one thing is uh, there is this branch uh, which is called dev slash com refactoring ng and um Last time I worked on that, that was printing, that was working. Um, it looks a bit different than current Octoprint because I haven't merged current Octoprint into it since last December, but it should still be working. And um, I would be really interested in whether how well and, and whether it works with other people's setups because um, I've only been able to test it with the virtual printer and my, my, my printer, printer zoo here. And that is, of course, only a very, 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 very small um, amount of, of, uh, uh, yeah, of hardware configurations. And I would be especially interested in how it works with something like Clipper, how it works via the network interface, because it has something in there already. So it should be able to communicate over TCP. And um, I simply have not had a printer <laughs> uh, available yet to test this. So in theory, it should work. In practice, I could never test it. And uh, I would be really interested in how, how well this works, if it even works at all. And maybe also if it doesn't work in people helping debug it, who can, yeah, you who have access to hardware that actually does this stuff. Um, and um, the other thing that I need to do and that um, before I can continue working on that, and that would also be something where someone else could help is um, maintenance needs to be merged back into that or rather current devil needs to be merged back into that and um, there's probably going to be some conflicts here and there and the biggest problem is that there have been some changes on the com layer as well during the past 11 months that need to be migrated and that is stuff that needs to be done and that is also why all of this takes so much longer than it could uh, because I constantly have to stop working on as over the over the years that I've been working on it now. I constantly have to stop working on it for months at a time because something more pressing happens and then I'm I'm yeah, then I usually have to spend something like a week or so doing nothing but merging and trying to find my bearings again. And this makes this so slow. So so yeah, on the level of molasses actually. So um uh, I have a to do document in this branch. Uh, it's a to-do MD in the source octoprint com, so where the no new stuff resides. And that uh, contains the stuff that I was, yeah, that I knew I still had to do the last time that I worked on that. Um, also some stack trace uh, that I just fixed the formatting on this morning and uh, stuff like that. So um, if anyone wants to help with moving this forward, taking a look at the source and seeing how they can help there and seeing if they can reproduce the problems, seeing if they can find the problems that are in there after merging current devil. That would be wonderful. That would be uh, a ton of help. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so in short, minimal commitment, test what is there. Larger commitment, help in merging the current devil branch, migrate changes that need changes and help with the to-dos that are documented. And if neither is an option, wait. 
And I'm sorry that I cannot even say wait until when, but yeah. Last year at this point, I think I said, uh, I think we are close and I think we can get this merch next year. <laughs> yeah. Look at what happened then 2022. Ah, okay. That was all of the questions from the backlog. And I cannot begin to tell you, or I cannot even begin to describe and put into words properly, I think, how absolutely frustrating it is to me to constantly just have to say, yeah, I haven't found time for that yet. And that is also something that is probably not um, a minor contributing factor to this whole, yeah, pending, constantly pending burnout situation. So, um, yeah, stuff needs to change. <laughs> and first I need to find the time to actually make them change. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of, it's a bit of a struggle, but it's not some, not, not a struggle that I'm yet prepared to give up on. So, uh, that is that. Okay. Do we have any questions in the live chat? I don't think we have. And ah, John asks, are you going to do anything special for Octoprint on air number 50? I just noticed that this funnily enough coincides with, uh, yeah, pretty much coincides with the Octoprint, uh, with the, yeah, with the 10, 10, 10 year anniversary. I mean, Octoprint number 50 will happen in December, right? And Octoprint's 10th birthday will be in December. And yeah, by the start of December, I think we are safe to assume that I was at least thinking about creating what is now Octoprint 10 years ago. So um, it would be safe to call December, the whole month of December, I think, the birthday month. Um, so yes, I think I'm going to maybe see that I combine the stuff, combine the things a bit, talk a bit about the whole history, how we got here, something like that. But yeah, I'll, I'll have to think about it. Um, but thank you for reminding me that the next one is number 50, because I would probably not have noticed until I prepared the uh, the announcement when it will be and then go, oh, oh, wow. So, yeah, um, I have some idea at least for how to spice things up a bit here and there um, for the announcement as well. Yeah. OK, um, thanks for reminding me. Um, anything else? Uh, Sebastian says, thanks for my answer about 64-bit. You're welcome. And uh, hey, if you have any ideas how that could benefit Octoprint, I'm all ears. I'm just... Pff, I cannot see how. I mean, remember, all of this was built for, um, for a Raspberry Pi 1 in, back in the day. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised we have multiple cores by now. And... <laughs> And now even 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 double the amount of bits that's that's insane uh john says i have to have a cake yeah i i will maybe i will bake something we'll we'll see um or have something made i'll see we'll see um yeah any more questions Also, this time the the fun new GitHub star back there did not cut out during the recording. So hooray! It's no longer powered by a USB battery, but rather by a full proper power supply. <laughs> okay, so apparently there are no more questions, um, which means uh, I'm going to wrap this up now, which is actually good good time because in 10 minutes the church will ring uh, a lot again and you will be able to hear that in the recording and I do not want you to hear that in recording so better to wrap things up early um, yeah so uh, uh, thanks for being here and I hope it was interesting sorry that some of the of the yeah that maybe the mood is a bit bleak here and there <laughs> Um, but I'm just telling you how things are and explaining why things are taking longer than I wish they would. And, uh, yeah, basically giving you transparency 
and even if it hurts. So there you go. And uh, I will the schedule schedule the, the number 50 for uh, sometime at the start of December. Um, as the final one of the year, probably also with my by now quite uh, usual um, uh, usual um, head on top. And um, yeah, then all that is left to say is uh, happy printing and until next time. Bye.